Here we go. Ding! <laughs> it's got some power. Let's see here. <laughs> I think it just blasted a hole through that uh, spatula thing. What is going on, everyone? Riddick here, and welcome to Off the Shelf Air Guns. That's right. Today we have the Crossman 3622 PCP rifle. Here it is right here. The new affordable, super affordable PCP rifle by Crossman. Of course, it may look familiar. It may look familiar because it is the third, it is the 362 kind of platform, you know, the same look, stock, things like that. But it's PCP. And uh, the whole premise of this is affordability for those that want to get into the PCP kind of thing but don't want to spend a ton of money. You can absolutely get into it with this bad boy right here. In fact, they have a combo platter for you where you can get this and a hand pump for well under what normally you would have to pay to in order to get into uh, the PCP world. Okay. So now there are some caveats to that being that it is budget super budget friendly you do not have a fill gauge on this so you're not going to be able to look at the gun and see how many shots you have left you're going to have it's just going to be guesswork uh, they claim up to 25 shots on a full 2000 psi fill because it is 2000 psi uh, there's been claims that people can get more than that but it's going to fall off because it's not regulated of course uh, at this price you can't really expect it to be all right. Now I know people are gonna not be happy about the fact that the breech is not steel. This is a plastic breech, but in order to have the price where it's at, that's kind of how it has to be. All right. The steel breech is not super expensive, so if you want to add that later, you can. You know, it's just like any of the other Crossman uh, air guns in this kind of family. You know, the 1377 and the 1322 and the 2240 and all that stuff, all mix and match on those kinds of upgrades and mods and whatnot, right? So you can get in there, get this bad boy, get started, and then go from there instead of having to sit here and dump a bunch of money at once. The whole point of this is budget, okay? So now I have shot it a few times already. Still, the, the breach that's on here is not giving me any trouble. It's just like the... the you know, the 362, the regular 362. Uh, one difference I will point out is that the gun here, this one has barrel bands on it, okay, which the uh, regular 362 does not. Uh, we got a hooded front sight there, and your rear sight is adjustable for elevation and windage, and it also is a peep, and then a regular flat sight, which I like to call buckhorn. I know it's not a buckhorn, but that's what I call it, so get over it. Okay, so it's, a, it's you know, flip it around for whichever one you want to use. Um, what else? Cross bolt safety, just like on the uh, regular 362. Nice rubber butt pad back there. My favorite thing about it is, man, is it lightweight. It's very lightweight. It's got to be only around three pounds, okay? It's super lightweight, but it feels nice and solid and sturdy, okay? Nice and solid and sturdy, yet, man, <laughs> super lightweight, no problem, no problem. And gr you know what? This is great for a younger individual to get involved in, like, the PCP world and stuff like that, you know? And then you can make them do, if you've got a hand pump, you can make them do all the work while you sit down and do nothing, so. <laughs> now, where you fill it is up here. And it's got a little water bottle cap on it. That's what I like to call it because that's what it looks like. So that's where you fill it right there. This little water bottle cap mm, might not last too long when we're going back and forth with it. So you may have to replace that. <laughs> but the good news is it's just a little water bottle cap. It wouldn't be that hard to replace. You could moderate this like you, the same way you would your other ones, 362 and other you know models like that 2240 so forth and so on 
So you can't, it can be done, it can be done, but it's not gonna just be a simple swap. There's no, you're gonna have to do some things to make that happen. But, neither here nor there. The trigger, you know, it's not adjustable. So that's gonna bum people out. And it's kind of a plastic trigger. So that's also gonna bum some people out. But let me tell you something, if that's bumming you out, then this is probably not the gun for you because this is aimed for individuals that have not gotten into this PCP scene, are not fluent in PCP, and they're trying to get into it at an affordable cost. And, you know, hey, <laughs> they, had to, they had to make some corners, they had to cut some corners in order to get it to that cost, all right? Uh, will it matter down the road? Well, the whole point is this is entry level. So once you get down the road and they want more out of it, well, you can upgrade it with the parts they provide that you can upgrade with, or they're going to move on to something bigger and better. You know, once they get their foot in the door and see what they want, well, there you go. Only one thing left to do, and that's do some plinking. Now, listen, this is a first look video. Okay. So this is not the full review. This is just, I just got this in my hands. I just filled it up. I already took a few shots to make sure we're good. Uh, so, this is just the first look. So for anybody watching, this is not the full review. This is a first look, quick, simple video, and make sure you come back in a few days for the full-blown review, because the full-blown review will be back, it will, will go up in a few days, okay? So this is just the initial reaction, just got it in my hands, seeing what's going on. First look. Today, we are gonna be using we're just, we're just doing some plinking here in the backyard. We are going to be using the JSB Exact Jumbo Express, and these are 14.35 grain. And I got these specifically for this because it was noted uh, in Hard Air Magazine that those, it likes the best. It seemed to be the most accurate with those. So that's what we're using. Of course, when we do the full review, We'll try different things. We'll try different pellets. And then of course there'll be more videos than just the full review on this thing. And we'll try and experiment with it and do all that stuff. So anyway, I had to talk a lot, you know, I know I talk too much, but I had to talk a lot. It's a first look video, I'm trying to explain some things to you guys. So you know what you're uh, getting yourself into here. Here we go. Ping! <laughs> it's got some power. It's got some power. It claims up to 700 FPS, and I can definitely see it doing all that. I can definitely see it doing all that. One thing I don't have out here is the box, and I really liked what they had on the box was they actually show you the foot-pounds of energy that you can get out of it. So 16 foot-pounds of energy is on the box. Okay? So I really liked that. And the other thing I wanted to note, and I'm just I'm triple checking because you never know about these people. But I'm really looking here to make sure. Yep, okay. This is made in the USA. So for anybody worried about what's made in the USA and this and that and third, this one is made in the USA, okay? So don't worry about that. You're not gonna pick this up and be like, oh, it says made in China, no. No, it claims to be made in USA, and, well, there's no made, to China, made in China stuff here. Not anywhere to be found, no sir. So, for anybody worried about that, you're good to go. 138 bar, yeah. It's, I like that. It tells you right there. I don't know if you can see that out here, but it tells you right there. Max fill pressure, 2,000 PSI, 138 bar. So, I like that. I do like that. It's super quick to fill. Super quick to fill. This ain't going to be no problem to fill with a hand pump. Super quick to fill with a compressor and ultra quick with a uh, scuba tank. You got to use one of those. Let's see here. <laughs> I think it just blasted a hole through that uh, spatula thing. See if we can't hit something a little smaller here. Oh yeah, it does have a little bite as far as the loudness. Maybe it's a little louder than I thought. Maybe it's a little louder than I thought. 
we'll see how it goes as we lose power over time. Well, that was on camera. That was three shots I took so far. Yeah. So they claim 25. Supposedly you're going to get more than 25. It's just going to die down after 25 is what I'm uh, guessing, obviously. What about the squirrel up there? Nope, missed it. It does have a little bark. It does have a little bark. Of course, we'll do the whole uh, ambient audio and stuff like that when we do the full review. Ha! Huh. Just nipped it. Just nipped it. I am curious what it's doing over the chronograph, which we will do in the full review. We're not taking out the chronograph today. This is just the first look. Try for one of them small ones again. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. You know, it does have a little bark. It's a little loud. I mean, you have to remember, I, my neighbors are, you know, not that close to say the least. So to me, it's not that loud. To you, this is in the backyard, could be an absolute nightmare for you. So just keep in mind, it, it does have a little bark and uh, you know, you may end up having to do the uh, little modification to put a moderator on there. There we go. Reset the squirrel. Shooting just fine here. And uh, those are 10 yards out, so I'm hitting my I'm hitting my tiny targets, no problem. I barely touch the sights. So this is just right out of the box. Barely touch the sights. Hitting my uh, my little targets, no problem. Little one inchers and two inchers. Let's try over here again. Yep, no problem. But tink a tink. But tink a tink a tink a tink. Of course, we'll do this one more time. Pating! <laughs> it patings. It definitely patings. Hmm. You know, the trigger isn't that bad from what I'm feeling here, just shooting it. Um, Normally I save something like that for a full review. I always forget anyway and end up having to come back and do it again. So what we're gonna do is while I'm thinking about it, we're gonna do the trigger pull test right here in this video because honestly, it doesn't feel that bad. Then again, I'm used to uh, horrible triggers. so <laughs> It could just be me. Let's go get the trigger gauge and we'll see what's going on. Okie dokie now, we got the Wheeler trigger gauge out here. Let's find out what we're doing here. Okay. Let's find out. Because I'm curious, and I know you are too. To me, it doesn't feel that bad. But again, like I said, I'm used to crappy triggers. So what else is new? <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Oop, really. Now, <laughs> I don't know who's saying it's four pounds, but that's what I got right there. That's what I got right there. Let's do it again just to make sure because, uh, you know, you never know. Here we go. That's what I got, folks. Between one and two. Between one and two. We'll call it around two average. So two pound average, that ain't that bad. At least on mine, it ain't that bad. Now remember, these are budget air guns, so the trigger may vary. Results may vary for you. You literally saw the results on mine between one and two, we'll call it an average of two. Two pound trigger, I'm not complaining. Let's do one more. One more shot, that is. <laughs> 
Man, it's still got a lot of power even though, you know, it's not regulated. It's right up there. <laughs> so there you go. This is just the first look. Like I said, just the first look. Make sure you come back. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel so you're, and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload videos. That way, if you're interested in my full-blown review, it's going to be coming real soon. This is just the first look. Just got it. We're just playing around with it out here in the backyard. Full-blown review coming real soon, so make sure you come back for that. But there it is, the Crossman 3622, and quite frankly, so far I'm liking this. So far I'm liking this, and it doesn't have a gauge, so we're going to have to use our ears, play it by ear, right? And uh, accuracy seems on point just from what I'm doing here. Uh, no problem hitting my little tiny targets out there at 10 yards. Of course, you know, you might push this out to 30. We'll see when we do the full review. But um, so far, I'm not seeing, like, I've seen some, uh, you know, questionable things online. I don't know if I agree with that. I'm liking this so far. I'm really liking it so far. Uh, this little, <laughs> little cap on your fill nozzle is, leaves a lot to be desired. But once again, we're talking about a budget PCP, the most budget-friendly PCP. Of course, you've got the plastic breech. It's not giving me any problems. Uh, if you're not using these JSBs, you may have trouble loading a different type of pellet. Of course, we're going to try all that. We're going to try all that when we get to the full review, so don't worry about that. We're going to try the budget pellets. We're going to try the Crossman hollow points that everybody loves. Uh, we're going to do all that stuff, all right? So don't worry. Yeah, there it is, the Crossman 3622. How about that? I'm, uh, huh. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> we'll really come to a decision when we do the full-blown review, but for now, okay, pretty cool, pretty cool. With that said, I will catch you all down the road.